Hi, everybody. Pastor Paul LaFontaine and Literal Life Church in Petersburg, Michigan, would like to invite you to take the next half hour and enjoy some time in the Word of God. If you're hungry for more of Christ, we believe you can be fed, and we pray that you'll be blessed. Visit our website for more information at literallife.church. May God bless you, my friend, and may the music and message encourage you today. Doubt will never make me 
1 Corinthians 13 and verse 8, charity, divine love, never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether they be knowledge, it shall vanish away. So Paul here, and this is where my subject is from, in 1 Corinthians 8, in the first three words there, charity never faileth. Prophecies, they'll fail. Tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. And Paul here is actually bringing an eternal, uh, the eternal part of what divine love is, that if it never fails, then it's eternal. It's always been there. It'll always be there. There are some temporal things in the church, like prophecies and like tongues, that in the meaning of this means that they will fade away someday. They will fade away. Prophecies will cease. Prophecies will fail. Knowledge shall vanish away. So there are things, even in the church, that will vanish and fade away someday. There are things that we won't need someday. So there are things that will fade away, but then there are things that are eternal and things that will never fail and will never fade away. And divine love is one of those things. It will never, ever fade away. It'll never fail you. It'll never fail. Because we know God can't fail. God can't fail. And so Paul's bringing in this eternal part that it can't fail. Other things will fail. They'll vanish away. But charity never faileth. Verse 9, for we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. So it shows what we're seeking for, what we're looking after, is not just to emphasize something that's temporal, but to have our eyes not just towards something that's surface or temporal, but to have our eyes on the unseen and that which is eternal. If you would go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I want to add a scripture in in relation to the eternal and how we're to live looking at the eternal. And it says here, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 16, yes, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. So this is a cycle that's happening that our outward man is perishing but our inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, I, I think it's interesting how Paul takes our life and the trials of it and all the suffering and calls it a light affliction. Wow. I want to look at my life like that. Our light affliction, in other words, our life with all of its pain, with all of its suffering, with all the hurts and all the things people did wrong to us, He's calling it, when, when you're looking at it in light of eternity, it's just a light affliction. But isn't it amazing how big we make our afflictions? And we make it bigger than God sometimes. Paul says, but our light affliction is but for a moment, it's working for us a far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen, they're temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. And out of all the dimensions, the many dimensions and vastness that we have covered about divine love, this one here today is not to be overlooked. I want to take a look at it, and I want to title this Divine Love Never Fails. This part of divine love should not be overlooked. Uh, we have appreciated all the different dimensions of looking at divine love and its characteristics, but this one is not to be overlooked. And I felt to finish 1 Corinthians 13 and to finish the scriptures and, what, and, and ask, what is the rest of 1 Corinthians 13 saying? What does the rest of it say? And this window that we've been calling it a window into the more excellent way. He says there's a more excellent way. Then he gives the characteristics of that way. It's divine love. It's God's love. It's, it's, it's agape love. And then he explores in this little window in between this Corinthians, which is a book of correction. The Corinthians is, you could call it a book of correction because Paul basically is setting things in order in the church that got out of order. 
And so in the midst of all this correction and correcting the gifts and all these other things, and setting it up, he has this excellent way just sandwiched right in the middle, and it's a window to the more excellent way to show us what it is. This chapter stands separate to itself, and it is looking at when a Christian breaks beyond the surface of feeling or temporal manifestations even of the Spirit or temporal surges of faith or temporal surges of hope to bring the Christian beyond the surface to a depth, to a depth of stability and power. How many this morning say I want to raise my hand and say I want to grow to more stability and power in my life and not stay a surface Christian? This is what Paul's trying to do. There's a more excellent way. There's manifestations of the Spirit. There's prophecies. There's giving to the poor. There's, a, there's an understanding all the mysteries. He takes all of that, but he says that's all. These things are all temporal. If you get knowledge of something, it's all temporal. But there's something eternal in here, and there's something beyond the surface of living every day by surface feeling. Let me just say that right away. Christians cannot live by sight. They must live by faith. And Christians cannot live off of their feelings. Christians cannot live by their feelings. You cannot judge your day and judge your Christian walk and judge your fellowship with God based upon how you feel. Because from one day to the next, you will feel very different. One day you'll feel good. One day you'll feel saved. The next day you won't feel saved. And those days when you don't feel saved... Satan likes those days and he capitalizes it and he's in your ear on your shoulder saying, that's right, not only do you not feel saved, I wonder if you're even saved at all. Boy, he's a, quite an enemy, isn't he? So, hey, we can't live off of our feelings. We can't live with our feelings as the dominant king that's setting in our heart, that's dictating our life every day, that this is how I feel. This is how, and a lot of times people will conclude on matters, conclude a lifelong conclusion, conclusion based upon their feelings of what happened, based upon lack of facts. And based upon, well, I feel this way, so it must be true. We can't do that. We can't live on feelings. We have to live deeper than that. And this is a realm into which we are coming to live in a way that perfect faith, which worketh by perfect love, masters every circumstance. It's a deeper life of stability and power in the Christian's life by the Holy Ghost. It's a realm of mastering every circumstance that comes our way. So this characteristics of love never, uh, love never failing, this characteristic should not be overlooked. That love never fails. Paul is saying we enjoy faith, we enjoy prophecies, and I want to just get this across. It doesn't mean that we eliminate. What he's saying here is that it'll, it'll fail. Prophecies will fail. These things will cease. Knowledge will fade away. It doesn't mean we, th those things stop happening as a manifestation of the Spirit. But what it means is they will fade away. They are temporal. I didn't intend to say this, but I, 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 years ago, the Lord showed me that there are things, are you listening? There are things that God gave us in the Bible as, as, as rules and guidelines and protections and boundaries that we will not need when we get on the other side. Can you say amen? And when you start breaking down teaching what te we teach about young people and the boundaries and not touching one another before marriage and all these other things, these is, this is all in the scripture and it's what God gave us to live in this life of sexual temptation, of our flesh taking over. It, 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 he gives us the Holy Ghost, but he gives us guidelines from the Old Testament to the New and we can't dump those things out. We need them for this life. You can't mock or ignore the preachers that are preaching God's guidelines for sexual temptation. There's some things in here he gave us for this life, and we honor that, but we won't need it for the other life. We won't need the scriptures for sexual temptation in the other, because there won't be any demons there. There won't be any lust there. Can you say amen? There won't be any of that there. It'll be gone. There won't be de no devil there. There won't be any accuser of the brethren. There won't be no sickness. Can you say amen? We won't need the scriptures to apply faith to divine healing, to believe God can heal the sick. We won't need those scriptures anymore because we'll never get sick. But do we need them now? Yes. 
So Paul says we enjoy faith, we enjoy prophecies, we enjoy knowledge, especially when it's from the Lord, but it will only have a season to it. It will fade. It will have a temporal help for you. You know, how many know that you can be prayed for and completely healed by the atonement, but you're going to get sick again sometimes? So your healing sometimes is temporal. Now, sometimes somebody's healed. That's it. They're prayed for. They don't have that problem again. They don't have that eye problem again. It's over. Can you say amen? But, but if we live in these bodies, we're going to get sick with something else again. So our healing can be temporal. And, and so because of that, we, it's a season. It will fade. It has a temporal help for us. But you see, we can't put all of our eggs in one basket. We can't live solely upon knowledge. Why? It will fade someday. We can't rest our eternal destination on temporal things. They will fade. They will have certain limitations to it. And to the Corinthians, you can't, Paul says you can't put an emphasis on these things too much because they are temporal. In other words, you can't have all your eggs in one basket. You can't take a prophecy or you can't take knowledge and put all your eggs in one basket and say, that's it. That is my, that I rest my eternal destination upon the knowledge that I have. You can't do that because it's temporal. It will fade away. Amen. But perfect love never fades never fails. It's constant. It never walks away. God's perfect love for you will never, ever walk away. When you fail, when you fail, his love will not fail. How many raise your hand and said, I failed before, but his love don't fail you. It's going to keep trying. It's going to keep loving you. It's going to keep drawing you. And there'll always be something if you're a daughter of God or son of God. There's always something down there. You got all this stuff on the outside, all the guilt and the shame that goes with it, all the things you've done wrong. That's all the stuff. But down here, if something's churning, that's because God's still dealing with you. And that means his love never fails. I don't care what you've done. His love never fails. It never gives up. It's constant. It never walks away. Why? It was it, because his love is not wavering by emotions, by feelings, by life changes, by people. His love doesn't change with people because people change. His love doesn't, is not wavered and moved and changed by emotions or feelings or the stock market or losing a job, or gaining a job, or his love does not fail during those times. His love is constant. It's always there. But perfect love never fades. It never fails. It's constant. It's not moved by feelings, or the stock market, or insurance policies, or sickness. Life is that seasons change, good and bad. Things end. Lives fade away, even good lives. Loved ones will die. Even good things in life will pass away, but his love is still here. Aren't you glad? God takes people from us, but he doesn't take himself from us. His love is still here. It'll never fail you. People leave us. People hurt us, but his love stays with us. Paul's teaching the Corinthians who need they need correction. They were sensationally driven. They were feeling driven. Putting all things on sensation or prophecies or emotion. You know, the Corinthians had great services. They had great services. Spirit-filled, pouring out of the Spirit. Tongues, interpretation of tongues. Praise be to God. From Pentecost, those things would happen. And he even happen, happen, have them happen today. But you see now... It, the Corinthians put their emphasis all on that, and Paul could recognize it. They didn't see it, but Paul could see. You're putting way too much emphasis on this, and if you put it on, it feels good. It visibly feels like more signs are here and more things are happening. It feels better. It's a confirmation that God is with us. The problem with that is when that is over, when that feeling is gone. How many can raise your hand and say, I have felt the presence of the Lord? Anybody says, no, you can't feel it. Oh, yeah, you can. You might be feeling it today. That that you feel, don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid of that. It's him coming near us. You never, you can be afraid of a lot of things, but you need to, don't need to be afraid of what you feel in your heart in the presence of the Lord. The problem is when it's all over, sometimes uh, people start to wonder, well, we didn't have a service like that, so is God with us now? 
What a terrible thing to say. All things from God are good, but some things are temporary. Can you say man? And that feeling that I felt, and I feel it this morning, I love it, but I can tell you that feeling isn't always there. But there is something that's always there that I can't get away from. It's the unfailing love of God that has never failed me, never left me. So I didn't feel the presence of God with you. You may not feel the presence of God, but you have no scripture to say he left you. His love can't leave you. It can't fail you. It can't stop. It can't end. Now, friends, shouldn't we be interested in something in a world that's failed us, in people who have failed us, even preachers have failed us? Isn't it, isn't it a time for us to latch on to with all of our hearts something that never will fail us? Never will. His love will never fail. It'll still be there. No matter what we go through, no matter what people have done, no matter what our trials, his love is constant. It's still there. It's still drawing your heart. Never gives up, never fails, never will fade away, always will be there. I've got some wonderful memories of feeling the presence of God in my life. Being on spiritual highs, like never dreamed of. I've got some wonderful memories of camp meetings, sometimes in our own services. I'll tell you, uh, there's been times, even our own services, I felt like shouting, running the aisles, and sometimes I ran the aisles. But you see now, I don't judge how close I am to the Lord by how fast I ran the aisles. Okay? Because I may have felt good, I felt blessings, I felt liberty, but when I get in my car, for some reason, when I get in my car, the devil's in my car. He's there, he's on my shoulder, he's whispering in my ear, he's distracting me to all the, you know, I'm going to call it the devil. You come out of me with service, you'll be thinking of things of God and rejoicing, and all of a sudden he's got you thinking about your business, what you got to do Monday, what you got to do Tuesday, you better do this, and all of a sudden pressure starts to come. In a matter of 10 minutes, the, all the glory that you felt is went out the window of the car. Was it really that important? But it's temporary. I've learned it in these great mountains. What I've learned in my Christian's experience, if it's a blessing to you today to know this, is those I've learned this journey isn't always a mountain. This journey has valleys. God loves to hear hallelujah from the valley. When I was a young Christian, I was not saying hallelujah from the valley. I don't know what I was saying, but it wasn't that. But that's what God wants to hear. It's easy to shout hallelujah from the mountains. It's easy to shout when you're at church. It's easy to shout hallelujah at camp meeting. But it's in the valley he wants to hear the praises of God. Glory be to God. Praise our God in the middle of a valley. I learned that there's not just mountains in this journey. There's valleys but one of the greatest things I've learned is there's a constant in my life. There's a constant. I might have mountains, I might have valleys, but there's something always constant. There's something always consistent. The God on the mountain is still God in the valley. And when I crash, I just fall back on him. One minister said here, when you fall, if you're going to fall, you may fall, but when you fall, fall back on him. When I crash, I fall back on him. And his love has never failed. It's never changed. Something really strong keeps holding me. Something keeps holding me. Something stronger than myself. Something stronger than my good feelings at meetings or the bad feelings during the valleys. Something stronger than what people feel about me. Something stronger is in my life. There's a constant in my life. And it's the love of God. Divine love never fails. We've seen people with their ups and downs and watching other people ups and downs and ins and outs and sometimes I say Lord you know I've labored for their lives I've prayed for their lives and just still that roller coaster up and down and up and down I say oh God if that's in my own life take it out but let, let me cling to the constant that's in my life let me cling to the consistency that's in my life 
something stronger than myself when I come from my own inconsistencies. And I have to apologize and say, God, forgive me. You know, that's the thing is that the devil takes failures. We're not, we got to look at this from an eternal perspective because from an eternal perspective, your failures don't make you a failure. What is it? You didn't know that? Well, wake up and smell the coffee. Because you failed doesn't make you a failure. Not in God's kingdom. Not in an eternal perspective, can you say amen? And I'm sure a few of us this morning have failed. Just raise your hand. Just a few of us, all right. But because you failed doesn't make you a failure. Not in God's eyes. But that's where the devil likes to take it. He likes to take it and your inconsistencies and other people's inconsistencies dominate your Christian walk and dominate your life for untold years. We've got to stop that. Today, we've got to stop that and we've got to look at something that's constant in our life. We may be inconsistent. Other people may be inconsistent. But there's something that's never inconsistent. It's always there and always will be there. Fathers fail us, mothers fail us, siblings fail us, cousins fail us, uncles fail us, churches fail us. But please get my message this morning. There's one thing that will never fail you, and that's the love of God in your life. Thank you for watching our message today. If you would like more information, please contact us by visiting our website, literallife.church. And if you would like to come and visit us in person, consider this your personal invitation. We're just 15 minutes north of Toledo at 11,100 Summerfield Road in Petersburg, Michigan. God bless you, my friend, and have a blessed day.